Hello my friends and welcome to Soil and Sasson. My name is Josefina. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than my usual content because today I am sharing with you guys a highly requested recipe from my Facebook friends and Instagram followers, my sourdough cinnamon rolls. I made these over the holidays and I had so many requests to share the recipe and I had promised over and over that I would post a video about it but between all of the holiday crazy and illness just running around my house the video just never happened so I'm gonna start off by sharing with you guys how I feed my sourdough starter I don't go about it the typical way of daily feeding and discard because that is just too overwhelming to me and I don't make enough bread for all that so this is the night before I'm starting the dough I just pulled this jar right out of the fridge so my starter lives in the fridge up until I need to use it so I have left it in there for up to four weeks before from there I never measure my ingredients I never measure how much water or flour go in I just add in and look for a like really thick pancake batter kind of consistency this right here is way too sticky so I'm adding in a little bit more water I have been making sourdough bread for going on two years now and this laid back approach has worked so well for me. I don't think that sourdough needs to be so strict because going through all those crazy rules of it needs to be this much flour with this much water, this percentage, it's just, it's too much and it makes it overly complicated. And now with the consistency I wanted of that like thick pancake batter, um, I am putting on a paper towel and then putting a rubber band over that and just scooting it to the back of the counter to stay overnight. And in the morning when I'm ready to work with it, it'll be nice and bubbly. It's the next morning and all those decorations in the background just prove how long ago I recorded this because these cinnamon rolls uh, I was making as gifts for my family. First thing I'm gonna do for this is to take a large stock pot and in that stock pot, I'm going to be adding in some oat milk. Um, you can use whole milk, I've used that before. I've used almond milk, honestly, any milk works great for these. I don't do dairy, so I just always have oat milk in the fridge, so that's what I'm using here. I'm also gonna have the amounts of all the ingredients down in the description box, but to that milk, I'm adding in my oil and sugar. I'm putting that on the stove, and I'm gonna give that a really good mix. I wanna say that I stood there and stirred that for for about two minutes because I want to make sure that there are no like really big clumps of sugar down at the bottom I want this really well mixed so that I can get it dissolved you don't want this mixture to come up to a boil honestly you don't even want it to come up to a simmer you just want it to get hot enough to where that sugar dissolves into the milk and then once it's done turn off the heat and move it off of the burner so that it can cool faster for me once it's cooled I take my starter which you can see has grown all the way to the top that it even got up to the napkin um, before falling back down it is okay that the starter fell because look at how bubbly and active it still is it looks great if it is still at like peak growth even better but if not it really isn't a big deal I promise this is still gonna work great so I am measuring it out right now I just need a cup of it but for the sake of recipe I wanted to measure it out and figure out how much exactly it was in grams adding that now to my milk mixture which has now cooled down stick your finger in it if it's room temperature or just a little bit warm it's okay you don't want it to be hot because then it is gonna kill your starter and that would stink so now that I'm done with the starter I've put the lid back on tapped it so you can see the glass top and back in the fridge it goes until the next time I need to make bread so I am stirring this in really well um, it is still gonna have some clumps which is completely okay but you want it stirred in really well into that milk mix so that it spreads throughout the dough really well. Now that I've got that really well incorporated, it's time to start adding in the flour. So I have a half measuring cup, that's why you're gonna see things in half measurements. Um, and I am first going to add in 
eight cups of flour. Um, in a second, you'll see the bag of the type of flour that I use. I get mine from Costco. It's great. Um, I know the counter did a little funky thing here, but it's because I paused the camera to grab that bag and threw in another half scoop. And so I forgot to record that portion, but it is eight cups. So eight cups go in and we are going to mix that really well. Just keep mixing. It is going to turn out to be a very, very thick, sticky dough, which is what you're looking for. And here I am showing you just how thick and sticky that dough is. So once it's all well mixed in and you're not seeing loose flour anymore, cover it with a towel and let that rise until it's doubled. This took me about two hours. So then once those two hours were up, I added in one more cup of flour. To that cup of flour, I added some baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And the reason I did that one cup on the side is because it helps to get that baking soda, the salt and baking powder mixed in really well into that dough so that I don't have bits and pieces of the dough without it. You can pre-mix the flour the baking soda and baking powder with the salt in a separate bowl and then dump it in there. But I've always done it this way. I've been making it for years and this works out really well for me. So when you go to mix this, it's gonna be tough. You're gonna feel like you are not getting it mixed in well. It's gonna seem like it's just not gonna go anywhere and it's not gonna get well incorporated and you might feel like you're at a loss with it. Keep mixing, I promise it's gonna get in there. I will mix with the spatula until I can't mix anymore and then I put on a glove and get to work with my hands. So what I do is I will grab the edge, fold it over, bring it in and smush. So grab, fold in and smush, grab, fold in and smush. And you will keep doing that over and over. And again, it's going to seem like it does not want to incorporate, but I promise you it's going to. You will eventually get to a point where you see that it is finally one mass and it is sticking together and it does still have a slightly sticky texture that is how it's supposed to be once you've got that then you will cover it with a lid or some plastic wrap or a damp towel and stick that in your refrigerator overnight it's the next morning and because i woke up at the butt crack of dawn i totally forgot i was recording these <laughs> So I had already cut the dough in half and got in my mixture of butter, cinnamon, and sugar mixed into this cup. It was up just a little bit above the two cup mark. Um, so I used half of it on this dough already, which brought it down to that one cup mark, which I'm over here showing you guys. So now I'm gonna show you with the second half of the dough what I did. So I floured the surface and I got that second half of the dough down. Um, I'm smushing it down with my hands just to kind of help me get a kind of rectangle shape. Um, I am looking for a long rectangle. If you do a long rectangle, then you're gonna get smaller but more in quantity cinnamon rolls. If you do a square shape, then you will get less cinnamon rolls, but they will be much bigger. So because these were gifts for other people, I wanted to have more in quantity and not so massive. Um, but when I am just doing it for just like a Christmas Eve event or just to have at home, I'll make the big ends. So once I've got it rolled out, um, I am spreading out that cinnamon buttery sugary mixture out as well as I can at this point because I was recording. Um, it did get a little bit more solidified, but it's okay. It's still spread out well. So now I'm going and I loosen the edge off the counter and I'm folding over the edge and pinching it down. I didn't go all the way because I wanted that edge to be even, so I pinched down that part, gave it a little roll, and then I went and pinched down that other part because I'm gonna try to keep it as even as possible. So then after that, you just kind of roll, tug it, and then roll it in a little bit more, and that'll help you to achieve a more tight roll so that your cinnamon roll doesn't come apart on you whenever you go to serve it. 
So then once I get to this point where I'm at the edge, then I bring the edge over and pinch it to seal it because again, if you don't, then whenever you go to put it in the pan, that edge is automatically going to come open. And as it is proofing again, then the cinnamon roll is gonna kind of separate from itself and you won't get that yummy gooey togetherness. So once I've got that, then I cut the edges off. And from there, I try to cut them as evenly as possible. And normally I would put butter in the bottoms of my pans before I put the cinnamon rolls in. But again, woke up with the butt crack of dawn was just, I don't know where I was. I was in outer space in my head apparently and forgot to do that. So if you got cinnamon rolls for me for Christmas and they stuck to the bottom of the pan, my bad, love you though. Um, so now I'm putting these in the pan and I'm putting the lids on them and I stuck them in the fridge and I actually did some for myself to test before doing this because I didn't want to gift stuff to people that I wasn't sure it was going to work out well. Putting these in the freezer and then baking them later worked out phenomenally. They were delicious, they were soft, they were moist, they were amazing. So having these just to keep them in the freezer for whenever you want to pop them out and have a really yummy treat with some hot coffee, uh, it works so well. If you are baking these right away though, you'll just want to put a towel over them once you've got them in a pan. Let them rise for about 20 minutes and then bake them in the oven until they've got a nice golden color. Look at these. Oh my god guys, they're so good. I wish I had an icing recipe for you guys. Unfortunately though, I always just throw those ingredients together. They're really easy to find online though. Uh, but that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed if you did Please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already I hope that you're willing to hit that subscribe button and stick around with me for a while on my journey to becoming a homesteader. I'll see you in the next one